My name is Cannon Barnett, and I am here with uh, Stephen McRae, who is running for Legis Legislative District 6 State Representative Position 1. How are you this morning, Stephen? Pretty good, thank you. Yeah. Um, so I guess we'll just jump right into it. Can you tell me a little bit about who you are? Just give me an introduction. So I am a lifelong resident of the West Plains. My family has lived in eastern Washington for well over 100 years. I am currently an elected water commissioner for District 10 of Spokane County. I serve on the Governor's Committee for Disability Issues and Employment and sit on the Legislative Subcommittee. I am an elected precinct committee officer in the 6th Legislative District. I am a member of the Executive Board for the Spokane County Democrats. I am the Secretary of Correspondence for the Spokane Council of the Blind. And I am a father of two, and I am a proud Democrat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so why are you running for state representative? So my family was severely impacted by the Gray Road fire that happened last August. And I attended one of the town hall meetings that were held by our current representatives, um, Mike Voles, uh, Jenny Graham, Schmick, and Dyer out of the ninth. And when I attended this meeting, it was supposed to be about getting resources to individuals that were impacted by the fire. And while I was at the meeting, they talked about everything basically but providing resources. It was a little over two and a half hours at the town hall meeting. And they spent about 10 minutes talking about the fire. And the rest of the time, they talked about um, political talking points for the Republican Party. They talked about existing COVID regulations that are still in hospitals and they spent quite a bit of time on that subject. They talked about deregulating health care, child care, and a whole myriad of things that really had nothing to do with the situation we have out there. Another one of my main motivators is I believe that politics is only good if we have choices on the ballot. And two years ago, we had so many of our representative positions that had nobody running against the Republican Party. And what we are hearing from our Democrats in our rural areas that they're disappointed that our party hasn't been showing up. And so one of the big efforts that we made as Democrats this year is to ensure that there are choices on the ballot. And we have done our best to, to fill almost every position that there are out there. And as a Democrat and in a position that I believe that I was able to run this year, I put myself forward. And another one of my motivators is I have a five-year-old daughter. And I'm watching a lot of the policies that are coming out of the Republican Party right now. And I believe that they are going to severely impact on the options on what women are going to be able to do with their bodies. And I want to fight against some of these things that are coming out of the right. And so I put myself forward in order to ensure that they have options for their future. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I, I kind of hear you touching on some of it, but can you say specifically what uh, issues you're going to focus on if you were to get this position? So one, one of the issues that I will focus on is the situation around PFAS coming off of Fairchild Air Force Base in the Spokane Inter International Airport. Um, as a water commissioner for a public utility, we have options because we have funding coming from multiple members of our water district. But individuals that are on private wells are left out in the cold, for lack of a better word. They have lost access to the water that they have. They bought their properties for expecting to be able to draw water from the ground. We are finding that some of these wells out there are testing at 200 to 250 times the federally safe limit for PFAS. And the the current administrations that are in control out there on the West Plains are offering little if no current options for these individuals. Another issue that I want to focus on is getting our fair shake of the state dollar for our education. And I want to ensure that across all, all levels of education, uh, pre-K, K through 12, and then um, for university level education. I want to ensure that, that people are able to go to school and get the full education that they want. And that also includes options as far as people who want to go into the trades and go through apprenticeship programs. And then finally, I want to start working towards um, viable options for our housing situation that we're facing right now. We have what is currently unaffordable housing across all levels, whether you want to purchase a home or you want to rent. And I, I want to start working towards getting solutions to get people into permanent housing, which I consider as owning your own home, as well as finding ways to protect those who are in rentals from landlords that 
are unscrupulously increasing rent prices for individuals. Mm -hmm. And how do you how do you plan to approach these issues? Well, Washington State needs to implement rules around rent control. I know that my opponent seems to think that if we implement um, rent control that it might drive individuals that are looking to invest in rentals out of the state, but I don't believe that'll be the case. Um, rent control is going to protect individuals that are currently renting from being priced out. It's also going to protect our individuals that are in um, on Social Security from becoming homeless. One of the largest groups that we're seeing becoming homeless in the state right now are the elderly because their incomes do not increase. And so we need to provide them some protections. Another one of the options that I want to look at is changing our laws around condo purchasing. In Washington state, it is much more difficult to purchase a condo than it is to purchase a single family home. And I want to look at what we can do at a regulatory level to change those laws around home loan programs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, what, what about the uh, PFAS issue? What would you do to approach well, that? First, we need to fully understand the scope of the problem. So we need to get some state funding for our individuals on private wells, not just in the hotspot that has already been identified, but we need to do it countywide and, and realistically statewide. We need to identify everywhere where the PFAS situation is now. And then once we have identified the full scope of the problem of PFAS, then we can start working into mitigation solutions. Mm hmm. OK. And so can you tell me a little bit about why uh, you believe you are the best person to tackle these issues? Well, specifically about the water one, I am an elected water commissioner. I am currently working in in this field. We are, are dealing with it on the ground level right now. I have been working with the West Plains Water Coalition, and I have a fairly strong understanding of what's going on specifically in the West Plains, and I have a little bit broader understanding of what's going on across the entire side of eastern Washington with the PFAS situation. With housing, I've been working with the, the Washington State Tenants Union, and I understand the impacts that our current housing situation is having with individuals in across the entire state with the rental increases that we've seen specifically over the last five years. Um, education, I am, I am currently a student. I am finishing up a degree in social work right now, and I understand what it's like right now trying to afford to get a degree, even at a relatively affordable university as Eastern Washington University. But I also have a son that was going to WSU, and I understand how cost prohibitive it is for somebody to achieve a university degree, especially somebody that's coming out of a family that doesn't have a lot of resources available to them. And the idea that somebody has to incur a lifelong debt in order to have a university degree is something that I believe is truly non-appropriate, especially when it comes to public universities. One of the chief goals of the government of Washington State is to fund education across all levels in our state. And we need to do a far better job. And some of the policies that I have seen my opponent vote for and against shows that it is not one of his top priorities to fully fund all education levels in the state of Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, in the beginning, I think you briefly went over some of your political experience. Um, are there any other noteworthy projects or um, initiatives that you're involved in? Um, Right now, I'm also working with the Spokane County Commission to get the Accessible Communities Advisory Committee back online, and that would be in order to give the disabled members of our community, specifically in the unincorporated parts of Spokane County, a voice again in our county government. It currently has nobody sitting on the county, the Accessible Communities, I'm sorry, the ACAC right now, um, and it hasn't had anybody sitting on this committee since December of 2023. And... This committee has the unique ability to draw funds from the state of Washington from individuals that are fined for illegally parking in disabled spaces. And these funds are to be used for projects that aren't traditionally funded through government programs. So if it's not currently a responsibility of the city government or the county government, this is where these grants and funds come into play. And without us having people on this committee, we are not able to access this money. And so this is one of the projects I'm working on, working with the Governor's Committee for Disability Issues and Employment. Um, in 2025, in March, Spokane will be the site for their outreach event of the year. Um, 
I'm actually very proud. This is something that I have brought to Spokane. And so this will be able to bring members of all the different disability communities to apply to be on this committee. Um, Nothing about us without us is the motto of this disabled community. And so I'm hoping to be able to get somebody from the blind community, which I'm a part of, the deaf community, the invisible disabilities community, uh, people who are developmentally disabled and who have mobility issues to be a part of this committee so that we can bring a voice to all of these different issues. Um, I've mentioned that I'm working with the West Plains Water Coalition in order to work to to start remedying some of the issues around the PFAS situation. And those are the two major projects that I'm currently working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Well, I think that that's pretty much everything I wanted to ask you directly. Is there anything else that you would just throw out there about um, about the race, anything that you're doing, stuff like that? I, I'm i out in the community. I'm engaging with everybody across all pro- political spectrums. Um, I do work with the Democratic Party, but I also have no problem sitting down with a Republican and listening to what they have to say. Um, one of the things that I, I find that's truly unfortunate about our current political situation is that People on the right and left aren't willing to sit down and have productive discussions, and we need to start fixing that. Both sides are passionate about our country, and if we can work from a mutual understanding that we both love our country, and we can start on the issues that we can agree need to be worked on, and then start working towards these more controversial issues, I think that it's a much healthier way at working towards a better state and a better national government. As soon as we can start getting across this issue of partisan politics, I believe that we're going to have a much healthier government and uh, just a much safer civil state for discourse amongst our constituents and our populace. Mm -hmm. And you believe that you can help facilitate this? Oh, I know I can help facilitate this. I have no problem in sitting down with anybody who's willing to have a civil conversation. Mm Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Stephen. I really appreciate it. It was great talking with you. Thank you.